So we say, in the afterlife, we die, immediately we die, we go to judgment. And that's, uh, God then decides whether we're going to go to heaven or hell. Ultimately, that's a decision. For those who are going to go to hell, their soul, because their body's here in the grave or in the incinerator, the soul goes to heaven or it goes to hell. But if it's good, sometimes though, often, and I'd say in most cases, if from experience of our fellow man, in most cases, there's a problem. You can't go straight to heaven because the Bible says, and say we take the book of Revelation, only the pure are in heaven. So what it says here, um, Revelation 22, 27, but nothing unclean shall enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood. So there, nothing unclean enters heaven. Reinforced by further on, Revelation 22, verse 14 and 15. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. This is the city of God, heaven, effectively. Outside of the dogs and sorcerers and fornicators and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So again, the impure various sorts are outside of the city of God. And um, so, and the, the final quote I'll have again from the book of Revelation chapter 21, um, verse seven. He who conquers shall have this heritage, which is eternal life. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But as for the cowards, the faithless, the polluted, as for murderers, fornicators, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their lot shall be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So there we have pretty much clear that in, if you're going to be in heaven, you've got to be pure. Our problem is, whether we're born again Christian, Catholic, Orthodox, whatever we are, we know that probably when we are going to die as an individual, all our character flaws will still be there. We might have got rid of some of them, maybe, maybe none of them. But we'll have a problem, we won't be perfect. So the moment of death we're imperfect, but in heaven, to be there, we've got to be perfect. So it's got to be this transition to go from imperfect to perfect. Now, does, okay, so then, that requires, before we speak about any more, per, any more doctrine, requires there be some kind of purgation some purging of the impurities in us. So we have to see whether scripture gives us any grounds for thinking that's true. But even if we didn't have any more than that, we know that Christianity can't hold together as a, a coherent concept if there's no purgation from the verses I've already read and from human experience. Which verse, which verse did you read? Oh, I was reading um, from tw chapter 21 of Revelation and chapter 22, where we have these various statements that um, that only the pure are in heaven and so and that and given that without reading the bible or any, reading anything we know that we're impure and that when we die we're not perfect at the moment of death there's got to be some transition between that moment of death where we're impure to the perfection of heaven if we're ever going to get there and so we go to what might support that well saint paul says in 1 corinthians chapter 15 um, verse 51 say Lo, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we, we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. It's in Handel's Messiah, actually. Very rousing. Another bit of music you might want to listen to when you finish with the Greeks. <laughs> um, so we see this, there's a change that happens. So we have that from Scripture. And just going back into. 1 Corinthians, verse 3, verse 15. Now this is a major one for Catholic um, apologetics. St. Paul is talking about um, people who, he said he's, he's built on the foundation, which is Christ Jesus, and different people will come and they'll build on that, and they'll build in different ways. Some are brilliant, some are not so brilliant, some are lousy. So it's about building with gold, silver, hay, straw, and um, their works will be tested on the day, the day, judgment day. And it will be a judgment which is by fire. So 
we will see whether our, our, what we did in this life was of value or not. And the interesting thing that St. Paul goes on to say in chapter, chapter 3, verse 15, if any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. St. Paul, 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 15. So what is really interesting, that, um, everybody says, okay, Christians, you die, in Christ, you're saved. But nobody says, hey, by the way, it's going to be through fire, because that would freak some people out. And only Catholics who are used to this idea of purgatory are kind of relaxed about it. Fire, okay, what's up, what, fire. But it's the fact that it, this is what Paul is saying. He'll be saved, but only as through fire. So if you're going to be saved, but you're going to go through fire, this isn't the fire of hell, because you're not going to be saved if you go through the fire of hell. 